What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. What's better than one snipe breast? Two snipe breast. And if you look closely, I left the heart intact. We're going to show you how to clean them and we're definitely going to show you how to cook them. But first, because they take a little while to cook, I wanted to show you that part. Any of y'all that hunt, you've probably done this recipe with deer meat before. Get your breast, put a piece of cream cheese, a little piece of jalapeno. Here comes the kick, some spinach. And that should help keep that cream cheese in here on the breast. And hopefully all the goodness just stays in one little place wrapped up in this blanket. Normally I would use toothpicks, but I don't have any toothpicks, so I cut some kebab sticks down. We've already got six or seven done. The spinach was really something I just winged. Anytime you're cooking and you think something would be good, don't be scared to try it. Got a piece of jalapeno, piece of spinach, roll and repeat. The trick with these is, is to get your grill hot. Not hot enough to where it burns the bacon, but hot enough to where it cooks that bacon before it makes the breast of the snipe well done. All right, I've got my temperature at 380 degrees. I'm just gonna lay them in here. All right, so now that we have them on the smoker and cooking, they're cooking really hot, so you really can't even say a smoker, more like a grill. You wanna watch us clean one? You grab him by the breast and his wings and you just pull him apart. Then you take the skin off of its breast and pull it off and you come home and it looks just like this. Yep. But these I cooked because I didn't want to cook them all that way because I like to sometimes just taste exactly like what they taste like. Look at that. A lot of people that eat birds or eat doves knows how good that is. That tastes like the best piece of steak you'll ever put in your mouth, minus the fat. And right on the inside, there's a little white loin. There's not much on here to eat, but trust me, oh my God. I could eat 50 of those. It doesn't get any better. So like I said earlier, this is based off of two trips. I went up there the first time on my new Diamondback airboat and I took Aubrey, my oldest brother, and my two kids, Jake and Luke, and we went catfishing. Y'all watch some of that. And when we get back, we're gonna go for a ride, put the drone in the air, and I'm gonna show you where and how we shoot these snipe. Because everybody else across the country, when you hear a snipe, they're like, yeah, I'm not gonna go stand in the corner with a white bag. That's not snipe hunting in South Florida. I'll show you snipe hunting, but first let's go for a quick airboat ride and show you the kids catfishing. When we get back, we'll go do the rest. Got Jake and Luke, my airboat, which y'all haven't seen in a while, Brito Smas Grande and his older daughter, Lauren. And we're up here on the Kissimmee River, headed after snipe, catfish. What else are we going for? Bass. We're going for a good time. Literally, that's what we're aiming for is a good time. Jake wants to bass fish. Luke wants to just do whatever. We got shotguns, bird shot, and a whole a lot of gear to do whatever we want. Hey, it's Brito Mascarande out here with Blue Gabe and the kids. We're going out on the restored Kissimmee River floodplain. I was proud from 1992 to 97 to work with South Florida Water Management District on the restoration of the Kissimmee, the largest river restoration project in the world. Can't wait to show you guys around some of the restored floodplain. It's a, it's a really tremendous project.
the camera up. Got us a Kissimmee River bass. He's not big, but he is a bass. Let me show you what we caught him on. <laughs> catching, point the camera at me. Believe it or not, catch him on the old salty bass. Yeah. On little Rapala. There it is. Oh boy! Blue Gabe! Oh look, oh look! Oh Luke, turn around! Luke's got him! Get him, Luke! Did he get off? Oh, yeah. Look at this. Well, first off, this is old alligator nest, it looks like. Gabe a real! I'm 40 years old and I just walked 17 miles and knee deep. I don't even know what to say it is. Hey, Gabe left me over here with the kids. We're catching bass and catfish, and Blue Gabe and Lauren piled them up. You want me to rig you up for, for cats? Yeah. Why is there so much food on the deck? You might want to ask your uh, small Luke, what, did, Luke, did you get hungry? Yeah. Hey, listen. Before they restored this river, I said, we studied, we wrote papers, we said when the floodplain floods, as the water level is falling, it'll create these real little rivulets. All the forage, thousands, millions and billions of shrimp and little forage organisms out in the floodplain, they come in these little rivulets, they flow in, they feed the food web. Hey, when you know what the food web is, you know how to exploit it. Now this catfish is part of the human food web. It ain't deer meat for dinner. Old Blue Gabe's having channel catfish sharpies for dinner. Look right there. Look at that, Luke. Oh, he's sitting right up. He, he's looking every way. He might want him some breakfast this morning. Well, the only person that, that who's going to eat is you. What? All right, so we just ran out into the river about a half mile from the boat ramp. My brother Aubrey, like he already has said, was a huge part of the restoration, and we're right here in the middle of it. This is a new section. They've done it in big sections. I'm going to let Aubrey explain to you just a little bit of why he's so excited right now. So you pour years of your life into a massive project and to come back now again it was 1992 to 1997 when i worked on the kissimmee restoration with amazing scientists mentors like lou toth engineer patricia strayer and so much of the leadership of the water management and the army corps of engineers so in this area lake kissimmee is to our north lake okeechobee is to the south you can see oak tree line behind me oak tree line behind gabe between the two oak tree lines is the floodplain, on average a mile to two miles wide. From Lake Kissimmee to Lake Okeechobee, straight line is about 56 miles. The old river was well over 100 miles. In uh, the 70s, the Army Corps dug a ditch, uh, channelized the river. And then again, in uh, the late 90s, 2000s up to present, they've been backfilling the old channel. They had to leave part of the northern channel and part of the southern channel for flood control. But this central portion of the river, they backfilled the channel. That's what all of this dirt here used to be piled up on the side of the channel. They pushed all that dirt back in the channel. Again, channel is a straight line and you'll see when we're running the airboat, sometimes we'll be in the, in the new river, the old oxbows, which have restored flow to. Now with the backfilled area, the water floods out into the floodplain. We've seen rosette spoonbills, we've seen birds, amazing. I've got to say this, and my mind is just on fire with so much I've seen. One of my jobs as a very young scientist, I sat and read Audubon Warden reports. In the early 1900s, um, women's hats had all these crazy bird feathers, and the plumage hunters, they were poaching all of our wading birds to near extinction. And Audubon, as an organization, was critical in preserving those birds from extinction. And they had wardens. They had Audubon wardens from the Kissimmee all the way down to the Keys. And as a young scientist, I literally read those reports and documented notes out of them. And one of the crazy things that we saw was how much the Audubon wardens on the Kissimmee talked about limpkins. And if you know limpkins, they're really cool looking birds. They're very solitary. And we always thought, 
that must have been an artifact from how those Audubon wardens, how they were running the river and how they must have just been seeing limpkins as an artifact. Their reports, I can't believe it. The amount of limpkins that we're seeing proportional to all the other birds, it's exactly kind of as the Audubon wardens were saying. We used to say, if we restore the form, if we get the river back to the right shape, then all of the biology would return pretty much naturally. It's, if we can keep the river flowing, if we can get the water back out on the floodplain. Alligators, I don't know if you'll see them. I think Gabe will launch a drone here in a minute. Crazy density of alligators. One thing that wasn't in the river pre-channelization were all of the non-native or the invasive species that we have. Armored catfish, walking catfish, tilapia like crazy. All of those non-native fish, many of them are adapted to low oxygen conditions in the water. If you watch in this water back here, you'll see those armored catfish boiling. They're, they're secondary air breathers. They breathe air, they hold it in their mouth or in some part of their anatomy, and they get oxygen out of the air they breathe. They're proliferating in these relatively low oxygen conditions. They're boiling on the surface and then the alligators are wiping them out. So you got a pretty healthy uh, alligator food storage system over here. And that there was y'all's fun fact of the year. Look at these bad mammoth jammers. A lot of people look at us hunters like we're just killers. If you're not a hunter and you haven't been outdoors and ate wild game and found peace with yourself out there and outdoors, you got to try it. I promise you. No, we don't hunt solely for food. We can go to the grocery stores for that. We hunt because we love to. The food is just a bonus. All right, so while these are cooling off, this is the moment of truth. We're on my airboat like we were with the kids, but now it's Kelly and Brennan. We pull up to this little, looks like a sandbar, but it's not because the water doesn't come up and down. It's just a high area and these snipe are piled up on it. Kelly and Brennan's up to bat first and I'm videoing. Y'all watch this. Good shot! All right guys, this is Brendan and Kelly's first time ever snipe hunting. I just pulled up to a little spot and said, y'all get off and look and see if there's any here. And they've jumped the mother load. But they're so small when you knock them down, if you take your eyes off of where you knocked them down, they're really hard to find. So I just walked over here to help them look. There it is right there. That's the one he watched. Here, hold your arm. All right, we got one, let's go. God, Lee, you're a killer. <laughs> Hold on, let Kelly catch up. That bird's gonna be hard to find, but I think I know where he's at. Nope, those wrong species. Brennan. Kick and shoot a little bit. Yeah, for being an electronics guy. <laughs> Hang TVs and shoot birds. I I know. He's right in the middle of them. Yeah, let's cut through right here. Kelly, come through. Kelly needs to be on the left That's side of you because she's more natural of a right-hander. All right, let's go through. You got him? I thought he went into the bush. That's not the bird that I saw Brennan shoot. That's another one. Yeah. From over there. This is the one he just shot. Bro, That's another one over here. You've been here. taking classes without me knowing. That's what happens. Shove him in my little pouch right here. Well, there we go. Right there, get him! Okay, kill. Yes! Good job, babe. I wasn't even aiming. <laughs> it's point and shoot. I told you, let that natural instinct. Here comes one spin around. Okay. He's somewhere right here, buddy. Right here on the cap on. He's somewhere right in here. Like finding a needle in a haystack. Yeah. We have to find this one. There he is. Kelly's first snipe. Hey. Woo! 
All right, y'all, Kelly busted her first one and Brendan knocked a bunch down, but now it's my turn. Let me put my head cam on and shoot a couple down and when we get back, we're gonna dig in. And I do have some amazing footage coming of a duck hunt that I wanna show you a sneak peek of. So don't go anywhere, it's just getting real. You guys, while y'all were watching that, I sampled one of these. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is probably the best thing I've ever cooked on this channel in all 150 videos. Oh my God. It don't get no better. Mm-mm. Look right here. You know what that is? That's a snipe heart, a little teeny snipe heart, and this is the best meat, the best Mia. And it, it does help that it's wrapped in bacon, but that meat alone, those five that I cooked earlier, I'm telling you, this is my favorite meal I've made on this channel yet. I wish Aubrey was here. You could do that with dove, pigeons, smaller ducks like teal, you could do that. I'm hey, speechless. Redneck wants some so bad. I'm literally speechless. Y'all watch enough of my videos, sometimes I don't even taste what I cook. It's not that it's not good because I know what I cook is good. Oh, this is amazing. So if you're interested in doing a hunt like what I just showed you, and by the way, we do pick up all the bullets. My snipe hunt video I did last year, we got a lot of hate. But here's the key. When you throw up and shoot that snipe, if you take your eyes off of where he fell down to go look for the bullets, you'll never find them. But when you come back, you can see where you were standing and then you pick them up. And we do. We pick up 99.9% .9 of our bullets. I just didn't show it in a video because it would take up the whole video if I showed you that. If you want to do a hunt like this, my buddy Casey with Clay Gully Outfitters does these and duck hunts. And I'm going to show you a sneak peek of our upcoming duck hunt right now. And when this video is over, you won't see me again because I'm going to be editing because we're leaving very soon for Jacksonville to do an offshore trigger fish grouper, African pompano trip, and then a red fishing trip. So you guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for checking out my girlfriend Kelly Young's channel and my brother Deer Meat for dinner. But like Jake always says, it's time to get the heck up out of here. Get the heck out of shape. See y'all. <laughs> Mikey said they're about to get that tic-tac-toe.
<laughs> I was going to shoot the one on the left and y'all started shooting and he ducked and weaved real quick.